welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be doing a short stretch sequence specifically geared toward stretching out your lower back. So if you suffer with sciatica, this is going to be really good for you. So it's not just stretching, but it's also strengthening the muscles that you'll need to help alleviate that sciatica discomfort in the future. So let's go ahead and get started. If you have a pillow, you might want to grab that so that you can use it if you need it or a bolster or a block, whatever you have available. So go ahead and lie down on your belly. Soften the tops of your feet onto the mat. Cross your forearms at the top of your mat and then rest your forehead down onto your forearms. So just taking these first few moments here to soften the muscles in your lower back. And so often when you have sciatica discomfort, you also clench the muscles around the pain areas. And so lying down on your belly really gives you the opportunity to just let it all soften down. And slowly lift your head, bring your hands just outside of your shoulders. Spread your fingers wide and really press down into the tops of your feet. As you inhale, lift your chest up off of the mat, just a few inches. Keep your hips pressing down, strong legs. This is a great move for strengthening your upper back and lengthening your spine. And lower down, recross your forearms underneath your forehead, point your toes long and lift your right foot up off of the mat. Keep your left foot pressing down. Wrap your right pinky toe down toward the mat, spin your inner right thigh up toward the ceiling. Press your hips down into the mat softly. And slowly lower your right leg back down. Same thing on the other side. Point your left toe, lift your left foot up off of the mat, just a few inches. Keep your right foot pressing down actively into the mat. Spin your inner left thigh up toward the ceiling and keep your hip points equally pressing down onto the mat. And lower your left leg down. Interlace your hands behind you just at the base of your spine. Keep your feet rooted down into the mat. And on your inhale, lift your chest up just a few inches as you lengthen your hands toward your heels. Again, the movement is very subtle here. The idea is to strengthen the back of your body. And lower down, release your hands. Next to your shoulders, press yourself up into a table position. Walk your knees out about as wide as your mat and bring your toes together. Then lower your hips to your heels and rock your hands forward, soften your forehead down onto the mat. If your forehead doesn't quite get to the mat, here's where you can use your bolster or your pillow and just place it right underneath your head so you have a little more support there. This is a great stretch for your lower back. Also, if you walk your fingers forward a little bit more, you'll get a nice stretch in your sides. Just let your head relax down. walk your hands in towards your shoulders and slowly roll yourself all the way up to a seat. Then shift your hips off to the side. Come to have a seat in the center of your mat and extend your legs out long in front of you. Then take your right leg and bend your knee in and hug your knee into your chest. Keep your left toes pointing or sorry flexed up 
so that you have engagement in your upper left leg. Now take your right foot and cross it outside of your left leg. And when you do that, you may feel sensation just behind your right hip and that's totally normal. And start for a moment here sitting tall, hug your knee in. Actively press your right foot into the mat. Now bring your right hand behind you. Inhale, reach your left arm up. And exhale, wrap your left arm around your right leg in a gentle twist. If you have more space or if you're not feeling enough of a stretch here, you can hook your left elbow outside of your right leg. Keep sitting tall in your spine. And as you inhale, lengthen your spine up to the ceiling. And with each exhale, wrap twist a little bit more. Again, only going to the point where you feel sensation, but if there's pain, that's a signal to back it off a little bit. And gently unwind, switching sides now. Move your way over to the opposite direction. Extend your right leg and bend your left knee in. Just hug your left knee in, sit nice and tall. And cross your left leg over your right. Again, just start here, sitting tall, and feel both sitting bones pressing down into the mat. So if you notice you're leaning to the side, really intentionally sit down with both hips equally planted onto the ground. Then bring your left hand behind you. Inhale, reach your right arm up. And exhale, wrap and twist over your left leg. Notice that your right foot is still engaged here, not just softening down. This keeps this pose a little bit more active. And if you have the wrap twist and it's not enough for you, you can hook your right elbow outside of your left leg. Inhale for length. Exhale to twist. Just breathe into where you feel this stretch the most. And slowly unwind. Now keep your leg exactly where it is. Just open your left hip out to the left a little bit. Keep your left toes flexed and bring your hands behind you so you're rocking back a little bit. Then bend your right knee in. If this is too much for you as your stretch gets into place, you can always walk your right foot out a little bit more or just keep your leg long, depending on how your hip feels here. So actively press your chest toward your left shin. And really pay attention to what your left foot is doing. You'll feel way more stretch if your left toes are flexed in versus pointed. And if you really want to refine this pose, bring the weight a little bit more into your right hip. It's a very subtle movement but you'll notice it right away. <laughs> and walk your right foot back out. Re-extend your left leg and just give your legs a little shake. We're going to switch sides now. So 
cross your right, bend your right knee and bring your right ankle just above your left knee. Flex your right toes, bring your hands behind your back. And this may be where you stay. Or if you'd like a little bit more sensation, bend your left knee and bring your knee in until you feel a stretch in your outer right hip. Flex your right toes and press your chest toward your right shin. Actively press your right knee away from you. And then for that little added bonus, maybe shift your weight a little bit into your left hip. Slowly walk your right, or sorry, your left foot back out. Uncross your right leg. Give your legs a little shake. Then bend both knees and bring your feet in toward one another. And just allow your knees to open up to the sides, just to stretch your inner thighs. Now's a good time to sit on your bolster or your pillow. If you find that you're really rounding a lot here, so if you lift your hips up a little higher than your feet, you may be able to get a little more length in your spine. And take a breath in. And exhale, hinge forward towards your feet, then round the crown of your head down to your feet. You should feel a nice stretch in your low back as well as in your inner thighs. And roll yourself up. Bring your hands outside of your knees and draw your knees in toward one another. Grab hold of your pillow or your bolster. Because we're going to be coming into a kneeling position. So if your knees are sensitive, you can stack multiple pillows on top of each other here. Place your pillow between your shins, your calf muscles, and then lower down to half the seat. This is a good stretch for your quadriceps. And again, notice if you're rounding, if you find that your back is rounding a lot here, make sure that you stack even more pillows on top of each other until you feel an opening and a stretch in your quadriceps. And just relax your hands down. Now, if you are able to do this without a bolster, you're welcome to not use the bolster at all. But pay attention to your knees here. This is a great way to sit to counteract all of the sitting in a chair that we do because it stretches the tops of your feet. And so often with the walking and the sitting, the tops of your feet are always in a flexion. So when you sit like this, it really is a nice stretch for the tops of your feet in addition to the tops of your legs. And if this is enough for you, just stay here. If you'd like a little bit more, you can bring your hands behind you, but keep pressing your knees down to the ground. So you're not sinking your knees. You may notice your knees automatically pop up and that's normal, but if they do, actively press them down and you'll feel a lot of stretch and opening in the front of your leg. And if you're leaning back, make your way back up. Lift your hips up and just slide your bolster off to the side. Then come to lie down on your back. Coming into that figure four position once more, 
cross your left ankle above your right knee and just press your left knee away from you with your left toes flexed. To go a little bit deeper, bring your right knee in, into your chest and either interlace your hands behind your right thigh or in front of your right shin. Then flex your right foot. And just like when we were seated, bring your weight a little bit more to the right. You'll feel a very subtle shift there and that makes all the difference in getting into your IT band. And lower your right foot down to the mat. And keep your legs in this position and slowly lower your right knee down to the floor and your left foot will come to the floor. So it shifts a little bit the intensity and the stretch in your outer left hip. If this is too much for you, you can just stack your legs like this. But if it feels okay, keep that. And if you'd like a little bit more, you can inch your right knee up a little bit more towards your shoulders. Arms can be out wide like cactus or T. and breathe into the stretch. Slowly bring your right knee back up and unwind your leg. Switch sides now, cross your left ankle above your right knee, press your right knee away from you and flex your right toes. Stay here or begin to hug your left knee into your left shoulder, interlace your hands either behind your left leg or in front of your left shin. Maybe shift your weight a little bit into your left hip. And you may notice that one side is tighter than the other side. That's totally normal. As humans, we are just asymmetrical in our bodies. So just notice it and it's fine. Don't let it, don't tell a story about it, okay? Don't make up a story about what your body is or isn't. Lower your left foot down and bring your arms out wide and slowly lower your left leg down onto the mat into your twist. Legs can be stacked if this is too intense for you or maybe lift your left knee up a little bit higher to get more intensity into your outer right hip. Just let gravity do the work here. There's no need to force the stretch and make it deeper than your body needs it to be right now. Slowly bring your knee back up to center. Unwind your leg and find your bolster, walk your feet in towards your sitting bones, lift your hips, and place your bolster underneath your hips. And just soften your hips down onto your support. If you have the space, you can extend your legs long, and this will really be a nice stretch for the front of your body. So what you're doing here is you're stretching your psoas muscle, which is the one that's likely giving you discomfort right now. And just let your hips relax down. Take about five breaths here.
and gently lift your hips up. Slide your pop off to the side. Hug your knees into your chest. Just massage your low back. And cross your legs at your ankles. Rock yourself forward and back until you can come up into a seat. And uh, thank you so much for joining me. Hopefully your sciatica is feeling a little less intense. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Namaste.